Welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. What up, Robin? What's up? Thanks for having me. Thank you. Am I the last guest of your guys' series? Of 2020? Of 2020? Are you the last guest? Uh, she act- Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, a you're Christmas the last guest miracle. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Pharos Fit Podcast. I'm here today uh, with Robin Rita, one of our uh, top female coaches, uh, who has a really interesting story. That's Emily Cavell, by the way, in there. Just a big fan over here. With the whoops. Number one fan. fan. Um, I'm going to be talking to both Robin and Emily today. Um, We've got some really interesting topics to talk about. Um, Robin has a a unique story, a very interesting story, and a fascinating story. We're actually going to start that story with a tale. Emily's going to tell the tale. Okay. Well, it's and this hard. is basically I, I this need... is basically how we first became aware of Robin and who Robin is. And then once Emily's told this tale, we're going to go on a journey from the point of the tale to now. Okay. And we're going right. to Robin's going to walk us through it's what happened between it's a journey what happened between then and now. And I must say my memory is a little hazy. Okay. So I'm actually going to ask you Okay. for this. Like how far back are we going? So when I first heard about Robin Reader, not even met Robin Reader, but heard about Robin Reader. Okay. As like a full name. Okay. <laughs> was some crazy story about Robin screaming at somebody on a run. No, you knew me before that. <laughs> um, th- let me, th- I did know you before this. So yeah, she knew I, I'm me as a friend before that. slightly exaggerating the story. Okay. But what, the reason this is that very I say important, it this though. way, I do, I, the reason I say it this way uh, is the first time I met Robin as a full, as Robin Reader. Yes. As in a woman who knows exactly who the fuck she is. Yes. And it was the first moment that I, that's why I say it's the first moment that I knew of Robin Okay. Reiter. And that kind of set the tone for knowing you. You know, you meet someone and you're like, oh, hey, and everyone's polite yes. and everyone's blah, blah, blah. And you don't know the true, like the authenticity of a person. And, uh, and then from that moment on, I'm like, oh, wow. Authenticity and presence <laughs> is something that Robin has clearly... I don't clearly... know if this story is like my brightest story. Okay, let's, well, let's, let's tell the story. Let's tell okay. the damn story. Okay, go. What is the story? You need help. Uh, I need help. Okay, so it <laughs> was... I think it was twenty. It was 2016 because Pharaohs has not it opened 2016, yet. It was yeah. 2016. 2016, so 2016 Pete and I just yet. met, just started yes. dating. And so me and Emily were friends before this, so she did know this. But... So Emily and Pete just started dating. It was an open gym situation at the gym we were all going to at the time. Emily was coaching there. Pete was actually kind of coaching there as well. So Under, I was underground coaching. You, he was underground. Undercover. He was <laughs> undercover coach. <laughs> <laughs> Took all of us with him. No, just kidding. Um, but really, it was yeah. a workout I did with my husband. My husband had just got into functional fitness at the time, and it was heavy deadlifts. Because he wanted to do it. And I knew I had to work on my weakness, which was running at the time. So it's like, I remember the workout. It was deadlifts and it was running. Okay? Five rounds of something shitty. (laughs) The run, you had to run out onto a busy street in Los Angeles, which I won't name the street, but it was a busy street, high traffic, a lot of people can see you. Then you run up a street that's like perpendicular to that street. So I make the turn for my 400 meter run up the street. I'm struggling. My legs are like basically dragging behind me. Kyle's far ahead of me, who's, you know, just starting to do functional fitness. I'm kind of getting (laughs) discouraged at this point in the workout. My husband's very strong. So this group of three girls walk by me. They block the sidewalk. Okay. Oh my God. One of them starts laughing at me because I'm literally probably look like an asshole. Okay. No. I probably, I'm like in a sports bra. I'm in like little tiny booty shorts with my big fat legs rubbing together. They're not fat. They're strong. I'm going to um, rephrase that. Oh, I love you for saying and, that. And, um, you know, one of them laughs at me. And any of you that have played a competitive sport know that there is a zone that you can go into. For me, I was in that zone. I was struggling. I was fighting my way out of this hole. I was burying myself in. Um, I saw red and I <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's what I remember. The only thing I remember about the story is yeah. Robin saw red. Yeah. So 
I saw red. The, my nickname playing soccer growing up was Red Card Robin for the same reason. So right. this is me. Red okay. Card Robin. That's red so this is a long-standing This, this is, is a long-standing thing. I hadn't seen this part of me in a very long time. Oh, God. So it came out, like, you know, post-soccer, like, 10 years later or something. And I told this girl I was going to fucking kill her. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, I finish my run. I'm coming back. The three girls are standing in the gym talking to Shep. And Shep oh is like the God. nicest guy ever. The gentle the, the, gentle, the giant. gentle giant. So nicest guy ever. He's like, why are you talking to me? I have no idea what happened. So I run back in looking like a hot mess. And then she's like, I'm calling the cops. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Pete. Well, she's like, she saw red. You guys, if you know Robin, you know that that tone. Yeah. So that, all I said was I was going to fucking kill her, which I shouldn't have said. I have said that before playing soccer. It's something that comes out. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not transplanted back to 10 year old Robin. I just like, I had PTSD. <laughs> so I like, whatever, something triggered me. So she's saying that she's going to call the cops. And then I don't know if you remember this part. You guys are opening at this point. You guys are like finishing the shed. She somehow finds that oh. I came and did a workout here as you guys are about to open on my Instagram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I and remember she that. contacted your Pharaoh's Instagram account. Oh, and yeah, Allison I do at remember the time was, yeah. was doing your Instagram. And she was basically like, if you hire this person, blah, 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 blah. Like, she's a horrible person. I'm going to have a restraining order. She's not going to be allowed in Echo Park. Oh, my God. I feel like I blacked out because oh I forgot all of that. Yes. Now it's flooding back to me. And now it's even funnier that we started with this because we did, in fact, hire you. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and here we are today. <laughs> and I think, you know, I think that was a big moment for me because, you know, I had to, like, really, like, check my privilege. I think that's, What do you like, mean when you say that? Like, if... She, th I threatened to kill someone. She threatened to call the cops. Nothing ever actually took place. But if I was a different person and I did do those things, like she could have maybe called the cops. She could have maybe got a restraining order. But like, you know, so you I mean, knew you got away with it. I because, got away right, with something because of, because of being a white female, or that you didn't get checked on, or exactly, like that. or know, like she didn't slap me, yeah. or she no one like she didn't attack me or something. Yeah. You know, you know, and it's funny because we're going to get into this, but I have almost, I've always in the past said like the advantages that you have as being a, like, I'm like, oh, I get, a, I, I, uh, I think I get away with a lot more actually as a female coach in terms of, yes. you know, like uh, those types of things. And I've always used that type of language as yes. a female, as like a female leader. And you kind of forget where it's like, oh yeah, like it comes, it, it comes it, from a, it comes from a place of just like not really understand, like, yeah not knowing that other people will have a different story. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But it's fun because like that maybe moment per se kind of started this rabbit hole that now here we are literally over four years later. Yep. You are a mom. You yep. are an incredible strength coach. Yep. You are an advocate. Yep. You are a human. You are a wife. You are like, uh, you know, you, uh, I feel like you have really like found a way to masterfully like, own that voice that you have, check who it is that you are, and make sure that you're using that voice to like empower and amplify others. And you've I, done a really good I job. Hope, I that. hope I have come out of that in that situation. I hope to never go in again. Like it is, you know, if we're not talking about my therapy here, but it is like, <laughs> it is one of those it could things. Be. We could be. Uh, it is one of those things that, you know, I do come back to because why do I go there? Right. Like well, what let me, triggers let me just say someone one, let to me go just there? Say one thing, like, and I'm not saying red card Robin is a good thing, but there is a lot of people these days. I mean, what happened was you were running, you were exhausted. They took one look at you and they laughed at you. And yeah. there are a lot of people these days that say things and they laugh at people they're and, and then they're not made accountable for their actions. Yeah. You made them accountable. You shouldn't have said what you said. Uh, yes. But I, it's I hard know. in that moment it's hard. when like, you have a voice, you have the, like when you have that desire, you have like this, uh, the injustice, you know, when yes. you have that feeling of just like, oh, you're and not I, understanding who I am. And I think the injustice is like a really big part of it because, you know, my husband was in front of me. He ran past them. If Pete would have ran past them with his shirt off or Jeff or someone like these right. listening bodies, right. would have they laughed at him? No, different. it would have been like, damn. 
Like, <laughs> look at that hunk. Right. But no, they laughed at me, and I just feel like I'm working just as hard as them. Right. Yeah. So well, it was a tri- it was a total was, trigger on triggered. many yes. many levels. Yes. It just yes. manifested itself in a red card, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, like you know, we're going through everything we're going through at the moment, and socially, there's a really interesting place right now. It's like you people can do things to us and if we react in such a way we can get in trouble for it but there's never any it doesn't feel like there's too much re- repercussion for the people who are doing things to us well we're but if finding we react that right the, now yeah well, but if we react in the wrong, wrong way about vandalism just to, yeah. just to yeah. be yeah, like but very vandalism frank, or, it's just yeah. you know like if someone vandalizes your property like you suffer you try to make people happy people will still vandalize your stuff and the account like no one you know the cops aren't coming the yeah. you know no police report nobody cares vandalism so it abuse, makes you feel like you need to have that moment of like yeah you know, of checking someone in that moment. If this was 2020 and I did what I did, you know, I don't think... You'd have been cancelled. Yes. The cancel culture, (laughs) I would have been cancelled. My social media, probably, like, I blocked her on social media. I don't even remember her name. (laughs) Um, I'm sure I have quite a few clients and members out there that are probably in acting classes with her because I (laughs) think she is an actress. Um... But, you know, I, I don't necessarily regret what I did, but I do think it has made me a better person. It's such a learning tool. It's a learning for experience a better or worse. as an adult. It, just like going a through a city, shitty yeah. workout, you know, it, like through hardship or through the mistakes, yeah. do we learn the most, the most amount of lessons? And through that, do we check ourselves? Because when everything's going great, we're like, I'm awesome. I don't need to check myself, you know? So yeah. when you're confronted with those things, it, you know. Yeah. So let, let's, let's go from that point. Okay. You, you've had one hell of a journey. Okay. Um, Red card so Robin. We're, so we're 2016. Ending 2016. And now, yeah, 2016 that this happened. We did hire Obviously, you. We, we did, did hire you. I was 2020, hired. We, 2020 where we are now takes on a journey from 2016 to now. Okay. What, what's happened to you? We're going to do, I'm going to speed up through some of it, slow down through some of it. Yeah. So hold Just on. Do your thing. Do your thing. Buckle up. Okay. So hired here at Pharaohs was not hired initially as a coach because, you know, they didn't know me as a coach. So I was hired as front desk. Uh, I, no, you were hired because I needed so much ha- help organizationally. Oh, yeah. And remember, it came from more of a consultant. You were like, you should do this, that, and the other thing. And, oh, my parents have owned businesses. Yeah. And they know about accounting and all of this. So I was like, I need you. Yeah. So it really came from a place of, like, needing you in this specific uh, moment. Like, a moment. Yep. Yes, but continue. Okay, so I got hired on. I helped with front desk. Um, I'm really, really, I'm good with numbers, obviously, through um, with all my strength tra- training and all that. But I'm very bad at writing emails, and Emily learned that early on. I think I fired you from front. I was like, yeah. I love you, yeah. and I'm, you can yeah. never write can another not, email yeah. again. Never writing emails. Anyways, <laughs> my husband got a job working on a Marvel film in Atlanta. So I was like, okay, well... I don't have like a serious career going on right now, so I'm gonna just follow him to Atlanta and see what happens. So follow him, I end up getting my CrossFit level one while I'm there. I train really hard with one of um, a top tier gym there. I learn a lot there at that gym. I also had learned a lot through Emily, Lucy, Pete, and then I will say this and I'm shouting out and you guys won't love me for it, but you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot through Jeff. Um, and like I do consider Jeff like one of my mentors. Absolutely. That's one of our on. late questions later, knowing what your answer is. Yeah, <laughs> so Jeff is one of my mentors early on. But um, so when I came back, you guys did. You guys hired me on pretty much right away when I got back from Atlanta that yeah. summer. It was fun to watch you on social media from afar because it was like you were here and yeah. you were gone. But I, we stayed with, you know, we stuck it together and saw that you were yeah. like posting yeah. about all of this stuff. And just like it, that seed was really taking yes. off. Um, got pregnant right when I got back. Yeah, right when you got back. Got pregnant right away. Yeah, um, yeah. This, is, this like, is 2017 This now? is tw- end of 2017 coming up. So we're in the end of 2017, get pregnant right away. Um, have a pretty easy pregnancy. Yeah, you were crushing. Yeah, I was working out like normal, didn't really stop doing anything. You kind of had baby gains. Yeah, I had like baby gains. Strong. I was very strong. I... Uh, I didn't really stop anything except ab workouts, I think, mm-hmm. early on. I am really, I have a short torso, so I was really, really aware of my core. Um, and then come 25 weeks pregnant, diagnosed with a rare cancer. 
So, uh, which cancer? Uh, Ewing sarcoma, which is so primarily it's a, a primarily a pediatric cancer of the bone. So like osteosarcoma. Exactly. But for so very children. similar to osteosarcoma. Um, this is, there, I don't know what the difference between osteo and Ewing's is. It is different on how, on a, like a. De- on, a on a graph. On a graph. It's the cells look different. <laughs> um, so 25 weeks pregnant, diagnosed with a rare cancer. Um, Still, my pregnancy is going great. I feel great. It started as a tiny, tiny, tiny little lump the size of your fingernail. How'd you notice it? It was right in my mom's pubis. So that area where your pubic hair grows, also that area where you make contact with the barbell. That's the moment. (laughs) So if any of you weightlifters out there listening to this, like, it's not a cautionary tale. It doesn't happen from weightlifting. In my case, it just happened to happen. What in that an incredible, it, honestly, it's like you found out, it, it's, yeah. it's how you found out that yeah. you had it. Because like, if you didn't have a contact sport yeah. right where it happened, then like, would you have caught it so early? Would you have, no, like, would probably you have not. Cause I was also pregnant. You can't see your vagina you, when absolutely. you're pregnant. Absolutely. <laughs> you have a belly. You can't look down there and see what's going on. Oh, that's such but, an like, interesting I, point. You know, it's not that I even had any pain. I was just, you know, I'm aware of my body being like someone that's into weightlifting. Like you are a little bit more aware of your body. When you're pregnant, you're way more aware of your body, probably more aware than um, any other time in your life. Ever. You just think about being pregnant. 24-7. 24-7. You don't have any other thought. And yeah. then, of course, 25 weeks hit, and then you think about being pregnant. And, and having, cancer. having cancer. So, you know, I had a tiny, tiny, tiny lump the size of a pinky fingernail, something that no one would go to the doctor for. But since you're already going to the doctor every three weeks at that point in your pregnancy, you're like, okay, I have this little lump. Can you look at it? My OBGYN, great doctor, looks at it, and he's like, you know what? It's nothing. It's the lipoma, which is just a fatty tissue. He's like, but, you know, just to be careful, and, like, this is the saving grace because most doctors would turn me away. I know. I love him. Yeah. He's always uh, same doctor. We uh, we have the same OB. We all went to the same (laughs) doctor. So while I was pregnant, a lot of people here were pregnant. (laughs) And then Emily became pregnant, like, nine months after me. Yeah. I was inspired. Uh, Very inspired. (laughs) Her and Pete. Um, (laughs) Thanks for qualifying that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just in case. Um, it is Pete's baby. Looks exactly like him. You know, so I got the ultrasound when I was in, I'm not going to go into like the details of di- being diagnosed with a rare cancer or being can- diagnosed with cancer, but you know, as I was at that ultrasound, you knew something was wrong when the doctor, right. you know, isn't just, is like, fixated on something and you're alone and I remember going to that appointment alone because Kyle was working still working on the Marvel movie I think they were in reshoots he was so he was across the street at Disney and um he had just started reshoots I think and I called him I was like you know what the doctor the the um the guy doing the radiology wants me to go back up to Shimona's right away so he, they had communicated as I like walked up the stairs. This is all on the same day? This is all on the same day. And Shimona is, is like, Robin, we got to get you into a general surgeon. There's something going on. We don't know what it is. And I'm like, shit. So at this point, I don't even think of cancer. You no. don't even, they don't even know what's cancer yet. They just know something's going on. I'm sure the person that did the first ultrasound knew something was up because of cancer, that type of cancer you can kind of tell through ultrasound. But obviously, he's not a pathologist. So, you know, I get the surgery. 26 weeks pregnant at this point, you know, going under, being pregnant, all scary, diagnosed with the rare cancer, 26 weeks pregnant now, very scary. I initially, because I still feel 100%, like besides being pregnant, I still feel really good. I initially told Pete and Emily right away, and I was like, look, I don't think I'm going to come back to work, you know, and that was really hard for me. Um, but I think I was only gone for a week. 
I think I had the surgery and I was yeah, gone I for remember, like a week. Yeah, I remember you coming to us and saying, so I have this thing and we're not sure. You were very yeah. calm about it. Yeah. It was like, I just have to do this thing and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. It'll probably, like this will probably yeah. be the thing that like puts, you know, since now you're 26. Yeah. You're like I'll probably have to finish the duration of this and I probably won't come back to work. Yeah. Yeah. But Robin's not like that. Yeah, I'm not like that. And so this, <laughs> you know, I got diagnosed with cancer. I healed from my surgery. My pregnancy is still going at 100%. So I'm like, you know, I have assuming that I'm going to have to like get this baby cooked all the way before I can do any treatment. I'm just going to go back to work, mm. yeah. you know, um, never was I told and I'm at UCLA, UCLA at this point now. I'm at one of the biggest sarcoma research hospitals now and I was never told like, you know, you, you might have to um, like abort your pregnancy. They I was never, never told that. that. No, I never thought that. I was never told that. The first time I met my surgeon, he was like, oh, don't worry, you're not gonna have to do that. Like, you, such as a, like nonchalant, like, like as that's something I had thought about. I didn't, I never right. thought. I was like, I'm gonna cook this baby as much as I could. Right. You know, I'm already, look, 40 weeks pregnant, I have a tiny torso. So I was like, I'm gonna get this baby going. Um, so, so your first thought of, yeah. uh, of uh, getting diagnosed is making sure that you can cook, still cook your baby. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So I get, you know, I, I, I get through 37 weeks of my pregnancy, still working out every day, still wow. coaching every day. Yeah. And then I think I was, my last day of coaching was June 26th. I remember this. My last day of coaching was June 26th, 2018. And then I was induced on June 27th, 2018. Mm. And then Baby Royal was born June 28th, yeah. 2018. So like a long, I think it was 28 hours of labor, but vaginal, hard. Worth it. Worth it. You know, I cooked him as long as I could. Yeah. And he, he's really fine. Yeah. Like nothing's right. Not even a preemie. He was in the ICU or the NICU for one day because he had jaundice. Right. And they were like, yeah. healthy babes. Healthy babes. So everything's wow. good. Yeah. And then, and we all knew that too. Yep. We, here, healthy baby. Amazing. Yep. How soon after uh, you had Royal were you told that you needed to do treatment? So I knew of being induced at 37 weeks, I had about two weeks of bonding. Right. So I had about two weeks of bonding and then I had to start treatment. And you know, cancer is cancer, and like I'm in, I'm full blown dove into the cancer community. So I know a lot about other types of cancers now, just from peers and stuff. Um, Ewing sarcoma's treatment is the hardest treatment because we have to be hospitalized for five days at a time once a month. So, you know, having a newborn baby and not being able to go into treatment and come home to your baby is pretty hard. Um, mm. Nine months, nine months of treatment. Nine months. Of nine treatment. months. So wow. I did 13 rounds of chemo. Um, it was like something like 50 days in the hospital, 52 days in the hospital. Couple blood transfusions in there. 31 days of radiation. Couple surgeries. No hair, hair coming back. I lost the hair again. And then um, now look at cute. And then now I have now a cute she, little French bomb. Yes, she does. Um, but yeah, so now we're kind of uh, caught up to uh, 2019. And I came back to work a month after I finished treatment. Yeah. Not being able to freaking squat my own body weight. Hmm. Isn't that but coaching insane? people on how to squat with a heavy barbell. Okay, I'm going to slow us down a little bit because what mentally like instead of going into you know because we said this is not a podcast about yes, Robin's cancer, exactly but it is a podcast about robin's resilience her presence her attitude and i would love for you to speak to like in the in the roughest moments in the hardest parts what were like it sounds silly to say like tools strategies but like what kept through you treatment going or yeah. coming back uh through treatment you know, I'm not like this is like something I don't share with everyone, but there were days where I didn't think I would make it where I was so sick and the chemo was so intense and my I was neutropenic, meaning I had no white blood cells like 
I couldn't even stand up to get to the bathroom. There were days where I couldn't even sip water because it tasted like drinking Acid. nails. Yeah, like just gross. You, the only, you, and this is like, I don't know, I talk about this a lot again with my therapist. Jesus, I have problems. Um, <laughs> the, I, you can't even think about anyone else. I have a newborn baby. I have a husband, I have parents, I have a sister, I have a best friend, but you cannot think when you're in a life or death, fight or flight situation, all you can think about is how to survive. And um, you go into a survival mode and you put your head down and you fucking work. Mm -hmm. You close your eyes just like you would through a hard workout, very similar, you close your eyes and you grind and you get through it. And I've talked to other mamas that have been through similar treatment as me, and we all say the same thing. Now, this, this is interesting because do you think the process taught you that, or do you think that already existed inside of you? Ooh, because I, I remember. nurture. Yeah, I remember, and we, we talked about this, like Robin, you going through this, but yeah. us never hearing you complain. Um, never, never, no, never any kind of like, woe is me, this, why is oh this gosh, happening to me? Oh my gosh, you should talk to thing. my husband. Well, I know, but, I, but I'm, I'm just yes. saying like from the outside from the perspective, outside. it was just this amazing like strength and resilience. And we were like, how is she doing this? How is she staying so positive? I mean, you can say what you said about saying stuff for Carl, but the fact is that you did come back to work when you came back to work. You did train and you did work all the way up until yes. pregnancy. So that, that, right. that did was happen. Was it in you or, so did it, or were you training it? And um, if, it, if it is in you, where did it come from? Did, so, oh, God. Red card Robin. So I do think biologically it is in everyone. Do you have to train it? Probably. How to train it? Some people is probably through trauma of their past. I think in my case, mine is through a childhood trauma. I'm not going to get into that right now. I think mine was brought on through childhood trauma that I had gone through when I was eight and I had already been through something really hard in my life. Mm. So, but the, you're saying that the trauma taught you resilience. Yeah. 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 I do. In so my you've case, been like, yes. And you've been like honing that resilience yes. and what it looks like. Yes. And uh, in my case, I think so. I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor. Like, you only have yourself. I only have yeah, myself. I only know how experience. I got through it. Um, not everyone has got through it how I have got through it. I have other people I have talked to that have gone through the same treatment and, you know, they didn't get through it. And is positivity part of it? I think so. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I love that belief that like I'm not a glass half full. Not person. at all. You are like <laughs> not that person. Like I'm not like oh you know I'm not like I'm not that person. But but there is this idea like as you were yeah. going through it, I had it's and of course I can yeah. say that with confidence now. Yeah. But I had zero yeah, doubt. You told me this. I had zero yeah. doubt that you weren't going to come back to work when you was yeah. all said and done. Like I had zero doubt that it that like it, you know I didn't worry at all I was like Robin unfortunately is made for this yeah. like for better or worse yeah. like you know give a trial or tribulation to anyone Robin will take that uh, obstacle yes. she will just bulldoze right through it I just had no doubt so yeah. it's hard because like is that false positivity sure I didn't want to make any room for any other no, like exactly. I did you know I didn't want to make room for the negative thoughts to consume me yes and I'm sure it's like having experienced it you're like yeah. I just can't let it uh, you can't and, it, and you know every day I think about it every day I think about cancer every day I think about what if it comes back but at the yeah, end every of month the, every, every two months you go for every, a scan I'm at every four months oh my now. gosh you've graduated I've graduated to every four months um so you know I I live in like and I told this to Emily not too long ago when right before I was gonna get my um USA weightlifting cert and this was early on out of treatment I was like I don't know if I should sign up for it because 
you know, I don't know how my scans are going to go and I don't want to spend money. And then like you think like shitty things like that because I live in like three month intervals. And I want to slap her across the yeah, face. Yeah, but you understand. But you would like, it, yeah. it's not that I don't think negative thoughts, but my positive thoughts. You just try to rein those up. Yes, above. exactly. Yeah. And is, is there any role models in here? Like a mother, an aunt? Is there anybody that was like... I love that he said fit, he specified female. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, for okay, example, yes. So my you, grandmother. Right. Okay. So my grandmother had three different types of cancer. She had a cancer in the '60s. She had a cancer in the '80s. Both non-related cancers. Sometimes cancers can like um, turn into secondary cancers. Um, these are non-related, and then ultimately died when I was a young adult of her third cancer. But, you know, I never heard like heard her ever complain about having cancer in the past. I never really knew her as that person. And then when I, I unfortunately had watched her die, um, she never complained. You know, I like had like this person like who I saw so strong and like really like ultimately cancer did take her, but like she fought her hardest through her battle. And did she battled that, three times. Uh, yeah, no kidding. That yeah. must just be so inspiring to think about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean inspi I mean cancer is the fucking worst and you know, I don't know there's a lot of research that shows there's not a lot of like environmental stuff with Ewing sarcoma, but like, you know, everything goes through your head, of course. And so like my husband yeah. says you can't go there and I, my therapist tells me that as well and you can't go there. And, but I think a lot of the members now, some of the members remember me as pregnant Robin. And then some of the members know me as athletic Robin pre-pregnancy. And then the members now don't, some members know me as the girl that came back being bald. And then we have a lot of new members now. You, yeah. you right. guys have growth yeah. in the ashes. You yeah. really do. Like, I mean, I love these growth in the ashes because it's the parking lot. The ashes of the parking lot. <laughs> that someone poured gasoline yeah. on. <laughs> the parking lot is, I mean, if you think about it, that uh, parking lot started you too. Uh, that is yeah. I, fr from the shed, man. From the shed. the shed. Yeah, so that parking ashes. lot has mm. been... Yeah. a really key player it's in a this business. It's it, a garden of growth. It is business. a garden of growth. But yeah, you know, so I don't think the newer members have any idea. Right. Mm. Of what that, yeah. And of that's what, kind of the fun of it. They just get to see the polished yes. version of yes. what that, um, yeah. of that journey, you know? Yes. Like, uh, so let's, they let's just talk get about that. that. Let's talk about that from like, what, what, what are the biggest lessons from, from Red Card Robin to you coming back? How do you think you've grown? Oh my gosh, I've grown tremendously, but I think my biggest growth is holding my tongue. <laughs> and how do you uh, how do you know when to do that? How do you know when to speak up? Yep. I, it, ha, it, speak to how you're managing that. Yes. I think a lot of, especially like women in leadership who uh, kind of play around with that as well, uh, struggle with this and would love to hear how you yeah, kind of work um, that out. I, I want to be inspiring I want to be an inspiring coach that being said I don't want to be inspiring for being a cancer survivor and being a coach right. I want to be inspiring for being a good coach for knowing my shit for knowing how to correct people for knowing how to get someone through a workout with proper form and not hurting themselves I want to be inspiring for getting people like pumped for a workout I think that's really important especially being outside right now like people are coming we're in COVID times. I don't know when you're listening to this, but it is COVID. D the December. dark ages. It's the dark <laughs> ages of COVID right now. We're in like our third lockdown. It's December. You know, people are over it. People yeah. are coming. This is their only time out of their house most days. Mm -hmm. Everyone's working from home. People's mental health is probably struggling. I know like mine is. I know my husband's is. I know my friends are. And so like when they come here, I want it to be a good part of their day. Mm -hmm. That is like super important to me. That being said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat the workouts for people. If like I saw Pete yesterday programmed like 500 meter row repeats and I'm like, this is not gonna be fun. 
<laughs> like, right. like uh. I was like, I'm not going to yeah. sugarcoat this for you. I was like, 500 meter row repeats suck. Yeah. This is going to suck, but this is how you're going to get through it. And this is how I would get through it. And this is why it's programmed with a one minute rest and not a two minute rest. And I explain to everyone why things are programmed the way they are. And I think that really helps people get through a workout here right right now in these dark times and uh when you speak to that idea of like holding your tongue um are, I snapped on Saturday at someone well not at a member you snapped no, at, snap a, at, a, at member. a passerby who was slamming their windows open and shut and well, screaming at our members so, so it doesn't but it doesn't matter because after because what you just said which was how do you hold your tongue is remembering that it's about them and not yes. about you that, exactly. that you want to be the best part of their day. And so sometimes, like, that is a really good tool. Like, remembering that why is a really good tool to holding your tongue and yeah. choosing your words wisely. Yeah, and I didn't yell at the woman slamming her window open and shut and yelling at us for an hour straight. No, you didn't. I knew most of the members had headphones in, <laughs> so they couldn't hear her except the members that were right down there by her. And then I just told you guys, I was like, hey, look, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and we can just backtrack a little bit here because I know, Emily, you, you struggle from the same thing from time to time as well. But do you think both of you, your voice has become so loud because you've had to fight to be heard in the industry? Do you think it was kind of like, a, well, if, I, if I'm going to be taken seriously, then I need to make myself heard. And if I want to make myself heard, I'm going to be somewhat boisterous with my voice. I, I think for me... I from I had Emily as a coach before. I've had other strong female coaches before. And that's where I thrive the most as an athlete. So I kind of like stepped back and be like, what do I want in a coach? Mm. I've also had coaches that have had really weak, meek voices. And I will stomp them over. Right. So you know the yeah. kind of coach that you need. So you want to be that, that kind exactly. of coach for others. I need someone to really keep me on top of it. Right. And like tell me when I'm doing something that's going to be dangerous to myself or dangerous to others or tell me I'm doing a good job. I don't, I don't necessarily need that validation, but like, you know, someone that just keeps you motivated through a workout and that even if you do have headphones on for 50 minutes, like we have outside right now, like you can maybe hear me through. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I don't yeah, care I if the say, neighbors on Saturday morning. I will me. say anyone who says otherwise, like, no, that's just my voice is like lying. Cause I remember, uh, going through coaching development and sitting in a room with another female coach. And it was like a drill that she would turn the music up and have me like speak louder and louder and louder and louder. And then uh, I, I'd get to this tone that would, I know, aren't, is, aren't you cringing? Just like it, it, the, the look on Robin's face right now is hilarious. Um, but I, like this was like in it, horrible, but louder and louder. And then as soon as my voice would turn to that, like kind of loudness that sounded like annoying and high pitched and like a little more mousy, she'd turn it off and be like, now that's not a coach's voice. And like, you know, like it has to be a different, like it has to be that Wait, different someone, sound. Someone trained you to do that? Yeah. Ew! Walked me through that. So it was definitely something where it was like the, this like I was trained to have like a quote unquote coaching voice, which is now why I play around so much. Like I was making the joke in our last coach's development that like sometimes my power voice is actually speaking like a child. Like it's when I like, it's more, you know, when I'm oh. like, come on guys, let's all round up. You oh, know, your, like that, I find voice. my, like that voice sometimes gets me farther than the voice that I was trained to because that was like the, well, if you're going to be a woman in this industry, then you have to have this voice, but you, you can't, it can't be too loud and too mousy and it can't sound like that, you know. You'll be a so bitch. Because, yeah, and you have to be, you have make to sure be that it sounds being, soft because otherwise yes. you're going to sound too too hard. That's my big, I've, I've had complaint. You know, when I first started coaching the compete class, <clears throat> someone complained about me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember? Oh, yeah. They complained about me. And you know what? And I think, and I will. But then again, someone complains about everybody. I was going to say, That's everyone true. complains about <laughs> it. Right. I don't yeah, think, honestly, I, I'm like probably the best person for constructive criticism because I take it with a grain of salt. So <laughs> You're like, because I'm like, whatever. No. No, uh, not because I'm like, whatever. I'm not going to be like, okay, this person's like hates me. It or hates me and I need to change my but entire the thing self. Is, like exactly. I knew the person who had to tell me didn't really want to tell me. Because knew I would be like that sexist, right? And was that kind of because scared? you because that yeah. was the because it is it is right. ultimately it is a little sexist. And why do you think that? 
because we I think it is very clear that to be a female strength and conditioning coach in a gym of 90 percent what's a male female we're probably yeah. 65 35 which it, which you don't like when you walk in you'll be like that's absurd no it's more like 80 20 but yeah. the energy yeah of you're right the, it's like if you actually do the numbers and look at it it's more like 65 35 but I absolutely understand yeah. and uh yeah and I will amplify that point for you because yes it is normally male dominated yes, you'll be the male only. dominated you have to have your voice heard heard for people to warm up correctly to do the movements correctly especially those compete classes you're flinging a barbell from your hip to your over your head you're flinging up over rings like there's other people walking by you have to be careful and it's for me safety is number one right so what may be then after a class perceived oh she had a bitchy attitude and it's like well if that was a guy with the exact same tone yeah. and the exact same yeah. thing exactly would you call would you call him a bitch would you call him harsh uh, so can I can I ask a, a broader question here yeah yeah so currently you know Ferris is two-thirds female owned um, I feel like our ratio between male and female coaches is probably even now, e maybe yeah. even more women yeah. than men. Um, um, do you feel like the industry? Yes. Do you feel like the industry still is like? Do you still consider it to be a male-dominated industry, or do you think it's fairly even now? Because I'm just, from my perspective, I don't, I don't feel that kind of like. Um, I don't feel like it's male-dominated anymore because I have such strong female like influence <laughs> in my business and in my life. But obviously, your perspective may be completely different. So do you still consider it to be a male-dominated industry or do you think it's kind of evened out? I think functional fitness, and I say that, I think functional fitness has probably evened things out, has like really like been like a big forefather for this community. Um, I think there's probably more female coaches at gyms I feel like yeah I mean I, I feel like I know more better female coaches than there's I do so, you know what I mean I know so many more better female coaches yeah. it's um it like it, it's crazy and I think it is that like you when you've mastered that voice yep. you have a commanding pres presence that's still so nurturing it's like yeah. you've really found that like but, uh, sorry for just using like binary terms here but like that masculine and feminine energy yeah. you've like you've like uh leveraged in your own self yes. to be as effective as possible to both you know to any um like population whether they're just starting out or they're uh, a hardcore athlete or they're male female anything in between whether they've just started you know every I, I think you're I think you're right I think it, it, there's a nurturing aspect to it that a lot of people enjoy and they need to get through those 60 minute classes and it's probably why you're also so nitpicky I say that like yeah. my nitpickiness or uh, rather my annoyingness as yeah. I sometimes call it is like comes from a place of you know it's caring. like it comes from that place of caring and that yeah. so I went saying that I know I sound exactly like my yeah. mom and exactly like Pete's mom yeah. <laughs> you know I say it because it's only because I care but it's it really is that care. like that feeling of just wanting to like give everything that you have to this moment to this person yeah. to this service to this yeah. hour of your time yeah, this is yeah. your, it's your job, really. Yeah. You're getting paid for that hour. And I do all my jobs at 100%, so this wouldn't be, except maybe writing emails, but 100% in <laughs> really my sucked. eyes. Isn't it crazy that someone can eyes. be so great at something yeah. and be like, wow, but why did you know? know? Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Um, because I know, like, personally, you, you veer more into the weightlifting side of things. Yes. You're doing your... I'm straight in. I'm only doing weightlifting You're doing now. your cow strength program and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what is it specifically about weightlifting that you love and, and that brings yeah, you... Yeah, so when I first started doing this type of fitness, it was originally weightlifting. So if you yeah, don't know what weightlifting yeah. is, there's a couple. So that's the Olympic style of weightlifting that we see in the Olympics. It's the clean and jerk and the snatch. I started at a gym in Burbank... Um, and I was just squatting and deadlifting, things I kind of knew how to do from playing sports. Um, and then this old man came up to me and he's like, hey, have you ever done this before? And I was like, no, what? I've never even seen it before. Mm. And so he taught me in this like Globo gym in Burbank how to snatch. And then I was kind of progressing and I didn't, they didn't have bumper plates at this gym. And he's mm. like, look, He's like, you need to find a gym that has platforms. You need to find these gyms. These gyms didn't exist yet. Right. Yeah. What was it about? Like, what do you think was the spark? Like, what was it that you, you were like? The this challenge. Is 
And what do you mean? Yeah, so there's such technical, beautiful, athletic lifts. You have to be so on to hit them perfectly. Um, your flow of it, where the barbell connects with you, your mobility overhead, your mobility in your ankles, how you squat, everything has to be just so perfect. It's a challenge. It's so funny that people say that uh, like Olympic lifting is very like, you know, meat heady. You look at it and you're like, ugh. But it's like dancing. It's like it's dancing. Like, as you were explaining this, your body yeah. is like flowing around. It's so it's romantic It's so to beautiful. Me. Yeah. yeah. It's a very romantic um, sport to me, which is a dying sport. Like CrossFit had brought it, functional fitness, had brought it back to life um, in the late 2000s. Um, had brought this old sport back to life. And now the International Weightlifting Federation is like pulling the number of people that are allowed to go to the Olympics. There's like shit going on in the weightlifting community right now that like people don't even know about. Like it is an Olympic sport that they are literally just pulling out from underneath us. Oh no. Yeah. They're so, you know. But it's a lot to do with the, with the drug problem, right? Oh, well, there's probably that. Right. And there's just a lot going on. There's a lot, lot going on. There's, there's some a lot other going drugs. on with a lot. There's a, like, a, you know, like Russia and China and yeah. stuff. People but do. it's great because you have like, it, it, because this planted this seed in you, it's like so fun to see just how many women you have gotten into yes. weightlifting. Yes. Mm. Like that is very cool to see. Yes. It's very cool to see how you have kind of like, you found this like niche of perhaps even uh, like people who would never even consider lifting I've and never now squatted with a never, barbell yeah. before. And so that's really fun to watch you yeah. like. It be, well, I think this. I think there is something very powerful about strength and capability, and there's nothing quite like the Olympic lifts that brings those two things together. Yes. Like I am both strong and capable all exactly. at the same time. Exactly, I agree. And, and what a beautiful way to build yeah. uh, confidence. Yeah, <laughs> yes. confidence builder yes. for sure. I think confidence build. I think weightlifting. I'm almost like ten years into it, like with like ups and downs, obviously. Hmm. Um, but you know, I had never stuck to a weightlifting program as long as I've stuck to this Cal Strength program. Shout out Cal Strength Masters. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, I'm just finding every day is more and more fun. It's hard, but my body has gotten used to like squatting every fucking day, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. some form of squat, overhead squat, front squats, Let back me ask you squats. about, so are you, are you weightlifting four times a week or? Yeah, I'm, so I'm four days through Cal Strength Masters and I'm doing one day on my own on Sundays of just like um, accessory lifts. Like GPP stuff? Exactly, right. GPP stuff. Hmm. And your body's doing good? Body's doing good. So my biggest thing is my tumor was originally in my mom's pubis. So my contact point is a little different now. Mm. Um, my hips were my strongest point of mm. my snatch and clean and jerk. Probably to a default because I was getting a little bit of a hip pop and a crash of the barbell so i've really had to like fine tune those lifts and i think i've only gotten better that's amazing mm. yeah because yeah. now i know like i don't have to crash the barbell into my vagina to get it up <laughs> overhead right it's great yeah like you couldn't use yeah. that as a crutch anymore yes. so you had to find like your right. way exactly Beautiful. my way yeah and which ends up being the correct way <laughs> um let me ask you this so you've you've improved as an athlete you know over i the, think over i think years. my strength is um if not the same as where it was when before I got pregnant, it may be a little higher. Amazing. I haven't maxed out any of those lifts since um, pre-pregnancy. But you're, you're definitely your knowledge and awareness of how Oh, yes, 100%. My, so, all I did in treatment was research stuff yeah. and read. Yeah. So I read a lot about. That's another tool. I was you had a you had something to like research. You had something yeah. to put your brain on. Yes, it exactly. I knew I wanted even though where forms. my tumor was, I craved snatching. <laughs> I wanted to snatch right. so badly because there was something there that was hindering me from snatching, mm. and all I wanted to do was you know come back and do it. I love that. Yeah. So at this point, like with everything that you've, you've gained, all the knowledge you've gained, what is, what is the hardest thing about being a coach and getting meaningful results from your client? And that can be, you know, I know you do, do a ton of clients at home now and you do, yeah. you know, you do the, uh, the, the classes here for us. 
how do you, what, what are the biggest challenges for you now as a coach? Is helping people through the mental aspect of working out. Right. Because I can explain how to snatch. I can explain how to clean and jerk to the best of my knowledge and to help them get the lift safely executed. Um, I don't do a lot of weightlifting with my clients, but I, they squat, they overhead press, they do all of their basic compound lifts. But, you know, I had a woman doing box jumps. She was terrified of box jumps. And I, I knew post. we had worked for two months doing box step ups. Two months. I knew she had the strength to go and do it. I yeah. knew she had it, but there was a mental block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, so it's like two months and you could just very well say, get over it, just do it, yes. blah, 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 right? Yeah. You know, but you're like, okay, I'm going to take this, this mental block yes. and I'm going to train this out of you just yes. like how we would any other skill, any other exactly. goal. Exactly. Well, it's, it's like thing. what we were talking about the other day. It's like people tell themselves the story of, I'm not the person that can do this. And you have to change that narrative of, I am the person that can exactly. do this. And we said the same thing about like the pink kettlebell the other day. Right. Like I'm the person that uses a pink kettlebell. I use well, a pink kettlebell. Well, so let's take it. We're talking about <laughs> someone who's been using a, the pink kettlebell for over two years and we're like, Move graduate on. to the blue one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, like, different. that's like different. Like I said, it's the story you tell yourself. It's the story of, oh, yes. I'm the person that uses the pink kettlebell as like, I'm the person that uses the blue kettlebell. And it's just a story that you tell yourself. It's not based on any kind of reality, really. You just don't, you don't consider yourself to be the person that can, so you don't. But once you, once you make that step, yeah. you're never the person that does the pink kettlebell anymore. Exactly. You're the person that I don't, I, in, that, in, this, in that circumstance of the pink kettlebell or the box jumper, I don't give them an option. <laughs> We're not doing step ups. We're not using the pink kettlebell. You're right. grabbing like, the blue that kettlebell. Moment, yeah. It will be an hour. I will sit here for an hour until right. you jump on that box. Right. Yeah. And we'll, if you don't do it today, we'll do it the next time. Right. And we're just going to get through that mental block like that. That's the way I would get through it. Yeah. I remember box jumps were really hard for me when I first started. Yeah, right? sure. So it's like a hard movement. People are scared of splitting open their shin, I assume. They've seen that on Instagram, probably. Yeah. Of someone with a terrible shin split open. But the I pink kettlebell. that, but also, it's also just like having something in front of you that you don't think you can do. And it's like, it's a yeah. very, yeah. very simple human. And it sounds like sad say, or weird saying this, but like, it's that insecurity of like, oh, I can't do that. And it, and it comes like, so you have to build up that like, oh wait, I can do that. Yes. Like, what is that? Like, you know, and that really is the most fun thing for coaches is to figure out what that thing is that's going to turn the switch on to like watch that light bulb moment of like switch to I can do this yes. and I will do it and I will do it over and over and over yep. and over and over again. And that box and will I'll get higher and higher and higher. Yep. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the fun part of being a coach because you see people that graduate from the pink kettlebell to the blue kettlebell to the yellow kettlebell. Right. Next thing you know, they're doing the 53-pound kettlebell and yeah. you're like, holy crap. Yeah. Also, if you take my class here at Ferris Echo Park, I don't let you pick your weight. <laughs> I choose the weights for you. Um, <sighs> on that kind of related to the subject, what are your non-negotiables both as a coach and as a human being? Yeah, so my non-negotiables as a coach would be safety. Like if you are hurting your, if you are going to hurt yourself or hurt someone around you, it's done. Like we're gonna start back from basics, body weight movements. It's yeah. probably so safety is my number one. And then as a human, being kind to yourself. Yeah, I think that's something that took me a really long time to like, even me just saying it right now is like, I've been through a lot and you know, my body isn't back to where it was. My weight isn't back to where it was. My snatch isn't back to where it was. I mean, I am maxing out this week, next week, next, next week. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. It might be, <laughs> but you know, everything isn't linear. So I... I'm just taking everything with a grain of salt one day at a time and that's all you can do and just love the people around you and know that the next day isn't guaranteed and um, this isn't the end all be all, mm -hmm. you know? Like fitness yeah. isn't, like it is my life, it is my career, it's my livelihood, but you know. You have a life. I have a life outside of this, barely, but I do. Right, well yeah. you have life. I have life, there. I have yeah. life, yeah good, that's a really good point. Yeah, so I have life, I have, I have a child. Yeah. I have, have a that. husband. Yeah. 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 And so I think so that kind of kind of everything kind of is coming back to that safety, mm. like being secure, being safe, being 
loved, loving, like um, letting the clients know, letting the members know that they are safe, they are loved, and we yeah. appreciate them. And like they appreciate us. Like I have a couple members, like I only see here. They don't even really know like that. Like there's one member, Sarah Crampton. I don't even know you outside gym. I know nothing about you. I only <laughs> see you an hour once a week, but like I've seen you progress so much. I don't even know where you came from, but like <laughs> I just like watch you and I'm always like in awe, like just being in the awe of our members yeah. Yeah. is yeah. like so important to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, an incredible thing yeah. when you see that. that yeah, it really it is. Really is. Yeah. Like the the video of my client doing a box job, I got the most comments I know. on. Yeah. Because people, people even are like, inspired by people other are, people finding out what they're capable of. Exactly. And, even like top tier athletes being like, that's amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, we're all fucking human. Yeah. And cool. Instagram and social media and all this shit has changed the way we communicate. But at the end of the day, we just want to be safe and we just want to be loved. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So I, that's a, I mean, that's a good point to finish on. I just, yeah. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to ask one thing because it has been an incredible journey for you. Yes. You have learned a ton. If you were to go through the same thing again, is there anything different you would tell yourself? Is there anything you would like to have done differently, or is it all kind of like taking the course that? Was I think best? this will, will kind of piggyback on the last thing. Be kind to myself. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. the hardest part is you know. I, I came back from Atlanta right before I got pregnant and I was the fittest I had ever been. I had a six pack. I was just jacked. I was fucking mm. strong. I was tan, like all these like vain things that people see and be like, I want to be like her. But 25 weeks later, no one wanted to be like me, you know? Like, so I just be kind to myself, yeah. like just be a little bit more aware that you know i'm going through a lot and not it's not all just fight or flight yeah. like i need to like sit down and like awesome. decompress uh, and how can people reach you where can they find you um i am almost robin lifts almost robin lifts on instagram um that's it that's how you reach that's me. That's how you reach that's me. That's it. That's, that's, it. It. that's I the don't only have way you can reach me. That's the yeah. only way. Um, here at Pharaoh's. Yeah, or um, just come say hi to you. Or just come class. say hi to yeah. me. I'm here Saturday mornings. Um, that class is hard to get into, but my Tuesday night class is a good time to come. Are you and taking on any private clients right now at home? Or are you... She's not. <laughs> Honestly, you could get maybe get on a wait list. If yeah. you're if you're excited, get on a oh wait my, list. Uh, I was like, sh let's not get, force her to We're coming like, into January first. Yes. I'm scared. She, <laughs> she she is she is has a, a full roster, jam packed with clients, but if you are interested in working with her, you can DM her, see if yes. she has a spot. We'll get you on a wait list. If you need um, any advice or any help. Yes, okay. any advice, any help, I'm DM me. I will I will gladly talk to you through Instagram. We can text through phone numbers in real life as well. Yeah. All right, Robin, thank you so much for coming. Thanks really so much, you guys. It. Thank really you for having it. me and thank you for being our sound engineer. Uh, he just <laughs> produces this whole thing. He's producer. The this thing happens. Our producer. Yeah. Brandon. Sound engineer. The best. All yeah. photographer. Ooh. All right. Most Men talented. of many hats. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Nice hat. That is it for today. Uh, we will see you real soon. Uh, stay safe out there. Take care and see ya. Hi. So cute.